Today I'm going to teach you how to change a clutch on a 2003 Kia Rio. Only problem is, I've never worked on a Kia before. <laughs> oh well, I guess I'll have to figure it out somehow. Still barely dries. And we're toasty. Let's get to business. Well, first remove this gay cover. Next, now remove the air intake assembly and battery. That's done. Now I've unplugged a couple wires that are in my way. Now I've got access to the bolts around the perimeter. So next step is undo the ball joint clevis bolt so I can separate the ball joint and move the axle over because soon the transmission will be moving this way. Now that the ball joint's separated and everything can move back and forth that way freely, you have to crawl underneath the vehicle, it's on my cardboards there, and remove the cross member that supports the motor and transmission. And at the same time, find a jack that can support the motor and transmission without the cross member. So now I'm crawling underneath the car and there's a manifold support bracket that has to be removed to get at the back bolt of the transmission that's above the passenger side axle. And that's this bracket here. It interferes with getting off one starter motor bolt and of course the 17 mil transmission bolt got most of the bolts out to get this cross member off but haven't got the jack under it yet so that's why it's still sitting there. I've removed more bolts where the oil pan bolts of the transmission into the exhaust bracket. Engine support cradle is off and engine is supported by a jack and a block of wood going up on the oil pan now you can freely see the rest of the transmission. Next step is to get a little wedge in there and pop out the passenger side axle from the transmission so that when it's unbolted I can move the transmission that way and of course put a bucket underneath because some gear oil will probably leak out. On a car like this I don't have to separate the ball joint and remove the axle from this side. I just leave it in the car and then when I'm putting the transmission back on I slip the axle back in the hole. Saves one step because that was a pain in the ass getting the seized ball joint cleavus bolt out on the other side. And I don't remove the axle from the spindle on this side either. That's just an extra step I don't need to do. Now that the ball joint's unhooked, the whole controller, I mean the whole strut assembly and spindle will just move this way as the transmission pulls this way to get at the clutch. Now the transmission is just hanging on by one bolt I left there that's loose. Other than that it's all flopping around. The speedometer sensor is still attached. Clutch cable is still attached. I may not need to remove those but I will have to readjust the clutch so I put oil on that little screw so it would be easier later on. The motor mount or transmission mount brackets are still attached to the transmission that were on the cross member. You can leave those on the transmission. Like I said, this is all floppy so the tranny can move this way. Now I have a, another jack set up so that when I take out that final bolt, I'll have this transmission, I'll have this jack jacked up to support the transmission so it doesn't drop out. And the axle's popped out on the other side and I'm catching the oil that's running out. I'll leave the axle and the transmission on this side, it's not necessary to be removed. Now of course I'm under the car and I did have to and I did have to remove the wire for the reverse light switch. Now I have to lower both of my jacks so the transmission can come down enough to clear that opening on the side wall of the car so that the transmission can move enough out of the way when it separates from the engine. Now that everything is supported, the engine's lowered a bit crooked. I'll remove that final bolt 
It's holding the tranny on. And there she be and nothing fell. So there's two ways to get the tranny starting to come off. One is go back in the car and push the clutch and that'll move the tranny over a bit. Two, get a screwdriver or a wedge in there or something and pry between the block and tranny with a pounding in with a hammer. But now that it's supported, don't expect any great fall or anything. Everything will be fine. Well, a little push of the clutch just gave me a centimeter gap. So now I just have to reach over grab the tranny and see how far I can wiggle it back. On most of the jobs I do, I see if I can get the tranny far enough out of the way that I can slip the clutch and pressure plate and everything in and unbolt it and rebolt it without putting the tranny on the ground and unhooking the last few things. Saves a few steps and it's kind of pain in the ass laying on your back holding up a tranny and getting it aligned. So, transmission is supported. A little prying. I do have enough room to rotate that flywheel, get all those bolts off that hold the pressure plate on. The rear axle is separated by a couple inches. Goes to that side of the car. And it looks like I can slip everything in there without removing the whole transmission. And I checked inside and when I get that pressure plate off there's enough room in there to get the clutch release bearing out too. So it should all work out. Sweet. So everything's unbolted. I'm slipping out the clutch friction disc and it looks shot. One side's a lot thicker than the other side and the rivets are definitely rubbing. Oh well. That'll just pull out the pressure plate. And that's slipping out no problem too. There we go. The surface of the flywheel looks excellent so luckily I don't have to take it off and get it remachined. There's one disadvantage to remachining flywheels is that when you get them back they have that rough machine texture on them and I find clutches last about 20,000 more kilometers if you put them on a polished flywheel surface then on that rough surface as it takes a long time for it to wear off and become polished. In this case the rivets luckily only wore out the pressure plate and since my kit is a new pressure plate that doesn't matter. And there's the new parts. Won't be able to use this handy dandy clutch alignment tool because I didn't remove the transmission so there's not enough room to get in there but I have another way when this is sitting on there, I can peek in from the side and just keep bumping it with a screwdriver while it's lightly tightened by fingers until when I rotate the engine, I see an even space all the way around. Then I know it'll work. Sweet. To get the old clutch release bearing out, I had to remove the bolt that went in there on those release forks to get the arm to move over enough to slip this thing off the shaft. Now you can see that smooth shaft. I have to put a little bit of grease on it so this rides back and forth easily when it's releasing the clutch. And I put a little bit of grease on the spline shaft and smooth end to help everything slip in better when I'm re-putting the transmission back on. Now time to slip on the bearing. That slipped on really easy now just to put that bolt back in. Now I just randomly slip in the pressure plate and then next I slip in the friction disc making sure that the side that sticks out goes towards the pressure plate and not the flywheel. And Then it'll sit on three dowel pins and I can put the bolts back in and then I can slip my screwdriver in until I get that thing centered with this edge and then evenly tighten it and then hopefully the tranny just slips right back on lickety-split. 
Well, everything just slipped right back on in 30 seconds, or at least one swig of a beer. Now the bolts. Of course, get all the bolts in kind of finger tight before you even think about tightening them. You can ne you'll never get them to line up if you start tightening the bolts before they're all in. You know, I just got an idea and it worked. I cut the end off that little alignment tool and while prying the transmission over a tiny bit more with my pry bar there was enough room, dirty as it was, to get my hand in there and actually slip that tool in. And I didn't have to use my more tedious method of rotating the pressure plate and tapping the fris friction disc in line to get it to line up. Hmm, sweet. Now I just have to tighten all the bolts evenly. Well, time to jack the motor and tranny back up to a more level position in the car so that hopefully the transmission just slips on easily. The odd time you've got to rotate the engine a little bit while you're slipping it on or put it in a few different positions or put the car in gear and twist the rotor, the brake rotor, and rotate things a little bit just get the splines to line up. Let's see what happens. So getting to flip the transmission back on once you got the new clutch on is always the trickiest part. Sometimes it just jumps right on, but most times it doesn't. So I'll show you a, a little trick that I used. It helps me a lot. I just take a couple of the wrong bolts that hold the top of the transmission to the motor. You see the right bolts are much smaller. And these wrong bolts act as guides. You just get the transmission jacked up to the right height and all parallel and level. Screw these in the two top places. Every transmission has those two top bolts. And then they're just like slip guides for the transmission to slide along these bolts. And when you have the jack under the tranny and a little bit of a pry bar helping you push, it can slip it right on. Another trick I did was I put the transmission in gear. Uh, that axle is of course still attached. And then I crawled under the other side and used a hammer and a piece of wood to tap the other inner CV joint back into the transmission. Now that the transmission couldn't turn, while I'm pushing I could rotate the engine a little bit and that caused the splines to just suddenly line up and the transmission just jumped in while on these bolts. Then when it's all jumped in like that, I can take these bolts out one at a time and put the correct bolts back in. Now the job is done. Everything else is easy. Just got to get the power tools in, whip all the bolts in place, and it's time for another gear. <laughs> well, I lost some gear oil, of course, when the transmission axle was pulled out a bit and it was tipped. So I found this black cap on top of the tranny, and that's the tranny vent. I just pulled it hard, and it came off. Now I'm going to squeeze some lube back in there. All done now, ready for a test voyage. Putting it back together was just straightforward, just like taking it apart. I already adjusted the clutch so there was an inch of play. And let's see what's going to happen. Well, she runs anyways. Man, that's wore out. Feels good so far. Yeah, baby. It's not mine. Feels real good. I like it.
sweet home. Well, this job ought to keep me enough beer money to last me a week. That's all that matters. Another day, another beer. Oh, by the way, the new clutch was $137 plus tax for that whole kit.